Uh, the gentleman yields back, and I now recognize the gentleman from California, Mr. Obernolte, for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and uh, thanks to everyone for participating in this critically important hearing. Uh, I want to touch on something that Congressman Smucker brought up, which is that the fact that we're having this discussion about the debt limit, uh, you know, really is, is means we're not talking about the larger picture here, which is uh, the federal deficit and our rising national debt. Uh, the one thing that the debt limit does force us to do is periodically have a discussion about the debt and how we're going to pay back the money that we're borrowing. So we, we've had a discussion here in this hearing about the recent letter from the Congressional Budget Office and a, a debate about whether or not real wagers are keeping up with inflation. But I wish that we were talking more about another document from the CBO uh, a, a few months ago, which was their budget forecast. Uh, I think uh, Congressman Feenstra touched on this a little bit. Uh, that, that forecast is eye-opening. I mean, it paints, uh, even under the most rosy scenario, which is that uh, we don't have another major recession, we don't have another major war, Congress doesn't enact any new spending measures uh, that, that promote deficit spending, uh, and the uh, 2017 tax cuts expire on, on time. You know, if all four of those things happen, then by the end of the forecast period, which is 2051, our national debt will only be 200% of our gross domestic product, just paying interest on that national debt will consume 9% almost of our entire economy, which is over half of federal tax revenue. And you know the, the really distressing thing about that is that's assuming that interest rates are within the range that the CBO projects now. If we have to raise interest rates to control inflation, uh, the CBO says that easily just paying interest on the debt could be 25% of GDP and over 100% of all of our federal tax revenue. So uh, that's what you know we need to, to focus on. And I think any discussion of eliminating the debt ceiling has to be paired with a discussion uh, about what our solution is to getting that, that national debt and our federal spending under control. So I really wish if we were talking about eliminating the debt ceiling, we would pair that with a measure, uh, for example, maybe a congressional budget, a, 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 a constitutional amendment requiring a balanced budget. I've introduced legislation that does that. I know other members of the committee have induced legislation that requires that. Uh, this is not a new idea. Almost all of the states require a balanced budget. My home state of California, I mean, obviously a very blue state, but uh, we have one of the strongest balanced budget requirements. And before my two years here on House budget, I spent five years as what we would call ranking member of the budget committee in the California legislature. And, you know, we made it work. Uh, and sometimes the minority party even even voted for it. So this this could be a template for uh, what the federal government does. And then uh, lastly, before I get to a question or two here, uh, I just want to talk about the specific proposal that's been raised here uh, in the hearing today, which is to transfer responsibility for raising the, the debt ceiling from the legislative branch to the executive branch and giving the Department of the Treasury that authority. And uh, this is something I've spent some time thinking about, and I would strong, strongly say that that's a bad idea. Uh, a few years ago, I wrote a doctoral dissertation on managing budgetary conflict between the legislative and executive branches. And as part of that research, we looked at the mechanisms that shift the balance of power between the executive and legislative branches at the federal level. And here's the problem with giving the Department of the Treasury that authority. Uh, the, their time horizon is much shorter because administrations come and go every four years or at most every eight years. Doing something like controlling federal spending is really politically difficult. And it's not something that you can get done on that short a time horizon. Uh, and politically, it's gonna be much more difficult for the executive branch to do that. So I, I would urge caution there. Uh, so uh, let me ask uh, Mr. Mulvaney, I, I think you've got some fascinating experience having served in both the legislative and the executive branches. Uh, do you think that, that Congress should essentially abdicate its responsibility for this and give it to the executive branch? And if not, what do you think the long-term solution is to controlling federal spending? Do you think it's uh, something like a balanced budget requirement? The, the longer answer is it, it just will. It's political will. The voters have to send people to office who care about balancing the budget and spending less. They're not doing that yet. So yeah, it, it will change. take a cultural change in Washington. Washington is set up right now to spend more money every single year, but because of the way that the budget process works, because of the way the CBO project works. Listen, that's a longer discussion for another day. Uh, as to uh, Mr. Boyle's suggestion about giving the Treasury, I'm sitting here 
Oh, I'm torn because I think the chances of me going back in the legislative branch are probably pretty low. Chances of me going back in the in the executive branch are probably pretty good. So yeah, give us give us more authority, please. Give us more power. No, don't do that. I mean, isn't that part of the problem we have right now? Is that we you guys delegate so much authority to the executive branch, and then you don't let the executive branch actually do it. They can't fire people. They can't hire people. They can actually run the government. Um, then you try to micromanage them on how you spend money by putting line items in appropriations bills, uh, and the whole thing just starts to break down. No, don't give more authority to the executive branch. By the way, you've got the same authority right now. I think on regs, you delegate all the regs down to the administrative to the executive branch, and you can oversee them, but you never do. Um, so you can overrule them, but you never do. So no, please don't give more authority to the executive branch. Uh, that is not a that is not a, a resolution to hardly anything. No well, thanks. And I see my time's expired, but uh, let me just highlight something that you said, which is that uh, the rules aren't broken here. Congress is broken, and in the future, as we have these discussions, Mr. Chairman, I hope that we can pivot away from pointing fingers at each other about which administration racked up the debt and whose fault it is, and instead focus on what the long-term solutions are, because uh, you know that's really why I think the elephant in the room. I yield back. Uh, gentlemen's time has expired. I now recognize the gentlewoman from Washington, Ms. Jayapal, for five minutes.